Is it true that Steve Jobs was a transnational adoptee? Yes, Steve Jobs was a transnational adoptee. He was born to an American mother and a Syrian father, but was adopted by Paul and Clara Jobs, an American couple of Armenian descent. Did he have siblings? Yes, Steve Jobs had siblings. From his biological parents, he had a sister named Mona Simpson, who was a novelist. From his adoptive parents, he had a sister named Patricia Ann Jobs. How did it affect Steve Jobs to be a transnational adoptee? Steve Jobs' adoption had a significant impact on his life and identity. Here are a few aspects. One, sense of identity. Jobs often spoke about the sense of being chosen and special due to his adoption. He felt that his adoptive parents were truly his real parents because they chose him. Two, relationship with biological family. Jobs had a complex relationship with his biological family. He met his biological sister, Mona Simpson, in adulthood and developed a close relationship with her. However, his relationship with his biological father, Abdul Fadah Jandali, was strained and distant. Three drive and ambition. Some biographers and those who knew Jobs have suggested that his drive and ambition might have been partly fueled by his need to prove himself, possibly influenced by his feelings about his adoption and identity. Four, personal struggles. Jobs experienced personal struggles related to his adoption, including issues of abandonment and identity, which were reflected in some of his actions and decisions throughout his life. Overall, while being a transnational adoptee brought both challenges and strengths to Steve Jobs' life, it contributed to the complex personality that played a crucial role in his success. Tell me more, please. Steve Jobs' adoption and background played a multifaceted role in shaping his character, life, and career. Early life and adoption. Adoption story. Jobs was born to Joanne Schiebel and Abdul Fada Jandali. His biological parents were both graduate students at the time and unmarried. Due to societal pressures and family opposition, they decided to put him up for adoption. Paul and Clara Jobs adopted him shortly after his birth. Feeling special? Jobs often spoke about how his adoptive parents made him feel special and loved. They told him he was chosen and that made him feel unique, which likely contributed to his strong sense of self-worth and confidence. Relationship with biological family. Meeting biological sister. Jobs discovered in his 20s that he had a biological sister, Mona Simpson. They developed a close relationship after meeting, and Jobs supported her career as a novelist. Jobs learned about his biological father, Abdul Fadah Jandali, but chose not to pursue a relationship with him. This decision reflected the complexity of his feelings about his adoption and biological roots. Identity and ambition. Abandonment issues. Jobs' adoption may have instilled in him a deep-seated fear of abandonment and a desire to prove himself. This inner drive contributed to his relentless pursuit of excellence and innovation. Adoption as a theme. The theme of being an outsider or different was a recurring one in Jobs' life. This outsider perspective possibly fueled his ability to think differently and challenge the status quo, leading to groundbreaking innovations. Personal and professional life. Complex personality. Jobs was known for his demanding and often abrasive personality. His need for control and perfectionism might have been partially influenced by his early experiences with adoption and identity. Relationships. Jobs had complicated personal relationships, including with his first daughter, Lisa Brennan Jobs, whom he initially denied paternity of. This denial and later reconciliation reflect his complex relationship with fatherhood and his own experiences as an adopted child. Success and legacy. Despite his personal challenges, Jobs' drive, vision, and creativity led to the creation of iconic products and the establishment of Apple as a leading technology company. His legacy continues to influence the tech industry and beyond. Overall, being a transnational adoptee deeply influenced Steve Jobs' life contributing to both his strengths and his struggles. His adoption story is a significant part of his narrative.
illustrating the profound impact that early life experiences can have on an individual's identity and achievements. Tell me more. Steve Jobs' adoption and his transnational background provide a deeper understanding of how his early life experiences shaped his personality, values, and approach to business. Here are some additional insights. Early life and adoption. Adoptive parents, Paul and Clara Jobs provided a stable and nurturing environment for Steve. Paul was a machinist and taught Steve about craftsmanship and attention to detail, which influenced Jobs' later insistence on high quality design and product aesthetics. Clara, a bookkeeper, supported his education and encouraged his intellectual pursuits. Biological parents background. Joanne Schiebel was of Swiss and German descent and Abdul Fattah Jindali was a Syrian political science professor. The diverse cultural backgrounds of his biological parents added a layer of complexity to Jobs' identity, though he did not explore his Middle Eastern heritage extensively. Relationship with biological family. Reconnection with Joanne Schiebel. Jobs eventually met his biological mother, Joanne Schiebel, and they developed a cordial relationship. However, his bond with her was not as strong as his relationship with his sister, Mona Simpson. Mona Simpson's influence. Mona and Steve shared a strong sibling bond. Mona's creative work as a novelist influenced Jobs' appreciation for storytelling and creativity, which he integrated into Apple's branding and marketing strategies. Impact on personal identity. Feeling different. Jobs' awareness of being adopted and his outsider status may have contributed to his rebellious nature and his desire to challenge conventional thinking. This mindset was pivotal in his approach to business and innovation. Search for meaning. Jobs' quest for understanding his origins and purpose in life led him on various spiritual and philosophical journeys, including a trip to India in search of enlightenment. These experiences influenced his minimalist aesthetic and holistic approach to product design. Professional drive and ambition. Perfectionism and control. Jobs need to prove himself and his fear of rejection may have driven his perfectionist tendencies and his need for control over Apple's products and operations. His insistence on excellence sometimes led to strained relationships with colleagues and employees, but also resulted in groundbreaking products. Visionary leadership, Job's ability to see the big picture, and his refusal to accept mediocrity were key factors in Apple's success. He was able to anticipate consumer needs and push the boundaries of technology, leading to innovations like the iPhone, iPad, and MacBook. Personal relationships, family dynamics. Job's relationship with his own children was complex. He initially denied paternity of his first daughter, Lisa Brennan Jobs, but later accepted her and supported her. His relationship with his other children from his marriage to Lorene Powell was more stable, though his demanding nature affected his family life. Adoption and fatherhood. Job's experiences as an adoptee likely influenced his approach to fatherhood. He sought to provide his children with the stability and opportunities that he valued from his adoptive parents, while also grappling with his own identity issues. Legacy and influence. Cultural impact. Jobs' adoption story adds a human dimension to his legacy, highlighting the importance of early life experiences in shaping an individual's path. His story inspires adoptees and others who face similar identity challenges, showing how such experiences can lead to resilience and success. Innovation and design. Jobs' insistence on integrating technology with art and humanities reshaped the tech industry. His legacy lives on in Apple's continued commitment to design excellence and user-friendly products. Overall, Steve Jobs' journey as a transnational adoptee is a testament to how complex personal histories can fuel extraordinary achievements. His life story underscores the interplay between personal challenges and professional triumphs, illustrating how overcoming adversity can lead to groundbreaking innovation and lasting impact. Did you ever talk about being adopted? No, we haven't talked about your adoption experience in detail. If you'd like to share or discuss it, I'm here to listen and support you. I said, did he, Steve Jobs, did he ever talk about being adopted? Yes, 
Steve Jobs did talk about being adopted on several occasions. He often mentioned how his adoptive parents made him feel special and chosen, which had a significant impact on his self-esteem and identity. Jobs publicly discussed his adoption in interviews and speeches, including his famous 2005 Stanford commencement address, where he spoke about how being adopted influenced his life and contributed to his perspective on being given a second chance. In his biography by Walter Isaacson, Jobs' adoption and his search for his biological family are also detailed, providing further insights into how these experiences shaped his personality and life choices. Can you tell me more about Walter Isaacson's book, please? The book name is Jobs' Adoption and Research for His Biological Family, I think it is. Can you tell me more about that book? Walter Isaacson's book on Steve Jobs is actually titled Steve Jobs. It is an authorized biography published in 2011, providing a comprehensive look at Jobs' life, career, and legacy. The book covers various aspects of his personal and professional journey, including his adoption and his search for his biological family. Key points about the book. One, comprehensive biography. The book is based on more than 40 interviews with Jobs conducted over two years, as well as interviews with over 100 family members, friends, colleagues, and competitors. Two, adoption. Isaacson details Jobs' feelings about his adoption including how he felt abandoned by his biological parents, but also chosen and special because of his adoptive parents. This duality played a significant role in shaping his identity and drive. Three, search for biological family. The book describes Job's journey to find his biological parents and his relationship with his biological sister, Mona Simpson. It covers the complexities and emotional aspects of these relationships. For professional life, Isaacson provides an in-depth look at Jobs' career, from founding Apple to his ousting and eventual return, and his role in creating revolutionary products like the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Number five, personal struggles and triumphs. The biography does not shy away from Jobs' flaws, including his sometimes abrasive personality, difficult relationships, and health struggles, particularly his battle with pancreatic cancer. Six, legacy. The book explores Jobs' lasting impact on technology, design, and popular culture, and how his vision and leadership transformed industries. Highlights. Human side. Isaacson paints a nuanced portrait of Jobs showing both his genius and his vulnerabilities. He captures the intense passion and perfectionism that drove Jobs and sometimes made him difficult to work with. Innovation and design. The book delves into Jobs' philosophy on design and innovation emphasizing his belief in the intersection of technology and the humanities. Personal relationships. It covers Jobs' relationships with key figures in his life, including his family, colleagues like Steve Wozniak, and rivals like Bill Gates. Isaacson's biography is considered one of the definitive accounts of Steve Jobs' life, providing valuable insights into the man behind Apple's iconic products. I would like to know some more about Steve Jobs and his adoption the adoption. For example, I would like to know what kind of an adoptee he was. He was a transnational adoptee, you said. So where was he born? <clears throat> was he born in the United States? If, uh, b- but if he was born there because he was raised in the United States, then he was a national adoptee. I don't understand. Was he born in Switzerland? Where was he born? I apologize for the confusion. Steve Jobs was actually not a transnational adoptee. He was born and raised in the United States, making him a domestic adoptee. Details about Steve Jobs' adoption. One birthplace, Steve Jobs was born on February 24, 1955, in San Francisco, California, USA. Two, biological parents. His biological parents were Joanne Schiebel, an American of Swiss and German descent, and Abdul Fattah Jandali, a Syrian graduate student. They were not married at the time of his birth. Three, adoptive parents. He was adopted shortly after birth by Paul and Clara Jobs, a couple from Mountain View, California. Paul Jobs was a machinist and Clara Jobs was an accountant. Four, domestic adoption. Since both his biological and adoptive parents were in the United States, 
Jobs' adoption was a domestic one. Impact of his adoption. Feeling chosen, Jobs often spoke about how his adoptive parents made him feel special and chosen. This sentiment helped shape his self-esteem and confidence. Identity and drive. The knowledge of being adopted contributed to his complex sense of identity and may have fueled his drive to prove himself and achieve great things. Search for biological family. Jobs did eventually seek out his biological family. He met his biological sister, Mona Simpson, and they formed a close relationship. However, his relationship with his biological father, Abdul Fada Jindali, was distant and complicated. Conclusion. Steve Jobs' adoption was a significant part of his life story, influencing his personal and professional journey. Despite the challenges, his adoption also provided him with a stable and supportive environment that helped him develop into the visionary leader he became. Okay, so he was born in California and he was also raised in California. So his biological family and parents were kind of close to him. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Steve Jobs was born and raised in California. Here are some more details. One birthplace and early life. Jobs was born in San Francisco, California, and was adopted by Paul and Clara Jobs. He grew up in Mountain View, California, which is also in the San Francisco Bay Area. Two, proximity of biological family. While his biological parents, Joanne Schiebel and Abdul Fada Jandali, were in California when he was born, they did not have contact with him after the adoption. Joanne Schiebel later married Abdul Fada Jandali, and they had another child, Mona Simpson, who also grew up in California. Three, relationship with biological sister. Jobs did not know his biological sister, Mona Simpson, until adulthood. When he did meet her, they developed a close relationship. Simpson is a novelist, and Jobs supported her career. Four, biological father. Jobs' relationship with his biological father, Abdul Fada Jandali, was distant. They did not have a significant relationship even after Jobs learned about him. Overall, while Jobs' biological family was geographically close, his adoptive parents were the primary influence and support system in his life. The proximity did not translate into a relationship until later in his life when he sought out his biological family. Okay, I understand. Actually, I'm kind of comparing my own adoption story with Steve Jobs. And I found out that <clears throat> that's it not it's not that similar. Another thing I would like to know about is the language and the culture. Was he born in the United States? Okay, I understand that, but uh, his family can we say that uh, they were from another culture, or could we say that uh, this was a transcultural adoption? If we compare his biological family and how they lived and the family he was raised up in. Was it like a cultural difference in these families? Uh, when he later searched for his biological family, did he have some kind of cultural problems or something like that? Can you talk more about that, if you know anything? Steve Jobs' adoption can be considered more of a transcultural adoption in terms of his biological and adoptive family's backgrounds. Here's a breakdown of the cultural aspects. 1. Biological family. Cultural background. Jobs' biological father, Abdul Fada Jandali, was from Syria, and his biological mother, Joanne Schiebel, was of Swiss and German descent. This multicultural heritage added complexity to Jobs' cultural background. 2. Adoptive family. Cultural background. Jobs was raised in a middle-class American family in California. His adoptive parents, Paul and Clara Jobs, were of Armenian descent. While there may have been some cultural differences between Jobs' biological and adoptive families, they were not as pronounced as in some other transcultural adoptions. Number three, search for biological family. <clears throat> cultural differences. When Jobs later sought out his biological family, there were some cultural differences especially with his biological father, Abdul Fada Jandali, who came from a different cultural and linguistic background. However, Jobs' relationship with his biological family, particularly his sister Mona Simpson, seemed to be more about personal connection and less about cultural differences. Overall impact. 
cultural identity. Job's adoption and multicultural background likely influenced his sense of identity and worldview. While he was raised in American culture, his heritage and the knowledge of his biological family's background may have contributed to his broader perspective on life and creativity. In summary, while there were some cultural differences between Job's biological and adoptive families, his adoption can be seen as more of a transcultural adoption rather than a stark contrast in cultures. Job's search for his biological family did not seem to result in significant cultural problems, but rather provided him with a deeper understanding of his heritage and background. Okay, so you say it can be seen as a transcultural adoption, although I must say that, you know, the United States is like a multicultural country. It's a new country, and he grew up in California, in San Francisco, he said. So I think that's kind of a big city, and it's very multicultural. So I don't think that he had so much problems with this, as I think that he didn't grow up like I grew up in Sweden, and in the I mean in the eighties, for example, it was not a multicultural place to be at all. If we compare with the United States, I just wanted to add that. That's a valid point. Growing up in California, especially in a city like San Francisco would likely have exposed Steve Jobs to a more multicultural environment compared to many other places, including Sweden in the 1980s. The United States, with its diverse population and history of immigration, offers a unique cultural landscape that can vary significantly from region to region. This multicultural environment may have influenced Jobs' wealth, worldview, and cultural perspective potentially making any cultural differences between his biological and adoptive families less pronounced. Okay, so we didn't have any problems with uh, with at all the language barriers that I had uh, when, when I mean, growing up in Sweden, we talked Swedish and we learned English in school because Swedish is you know, it's a very small language, so almost everyone in Sweden know English quite well. But uh, as I was born in Chile, you know, my biological family speaks Spanish. And when I went there, they couldn't understand Swedish and they couldn't understand English. So it, I was, it was a huge problem. It was a huge language problem. And you know, language and culture and identity it's like it goes hand in hand. So this, uh, it's, uh, this is a huge, huge problems big time. It sounds like you faced significant challenges with language barriers, <clears throat> especially when visiting your biological family in Chile. Language is indeed closely tied to culture and identity and navigating different languages and cultures can be complex. Steve Jobs, on the other hand, likely did not face such challenges growing up in a multicultural environment in California, where English is the primary language. The diversity of experiences among adoptees highlights the unique aspects of each adoption story and how they shape an individual's identity and worldview. Another thing I wanted to add is that uh, I can't see that Steve Jobs was a transracial adoptee. Maybe we could say that he was because of his Swiss and Syrian background uh, to an Armenian family, but is that a transracial adoption? I don't know. If we just think about how he looks, he looks like a typical white man. He blends in in the United States and in San Francisco. I mean, he's not black, he's not Asian, he's not Latin American. I think he, can we say that he was from an Aryan background and he came to an Aryan family? Or how do you say it? Can we say that he was a transracial out of tea? Or is that wrong to say? The term transracial adoptee 
is typically used to describe an adoption where a child is adopted by parents of a different race or ethnicity. In Steve Jobs' case, while there were cultural differences between his biological and adoptive families, they were not of a different race. Jobs was of Swiss, German, and Syrian descent, and his adoptive parents were of Armenian descent. Given that Jobs and his adoptive parents were of similar Caucasian backgrounds, some might argue that his adoption was not truly transracial in the same way as if he had been adopted by parents of a different race. However, others might consider the cultural and ethnic differences between his biological and adoptive families to be significant enough to use the term transracial more broadly. In summary, while Steve Jobs' adoption involved cultural and ethnic differences, whether it fits the strict definition of transracial adoption may depend on the context and perspective of the person using the term. I mean, I don't think it would be obvious to see that uh, he didn't fit in his adoptive family as if he would have been black, for example, or Asian. Then it would have been obvious when he was with his adoptive family that people would look at him and, you know, I understand that that's not his real parent. Everyone can see that if you're adopted to the same race as your biological family, then I think people don't notice really. Because, okay, there, there's a huge difference. But Armenian and Syrian, I think, as you said, it's kind of the same. It's not very far away. Uh, what do you think about my thoughts about this? Your thoughts are insightful. The perception of fitting in or standing out in an adoptive family can depend on various factors, including race, ethnicity, and cultural similarities. In Steve Jobs' case, the differences between his biological and adoptive family's backgrounds may not have been as visually apparent as if he had been adopted into a family of a different race. Armenian and Syrian cultures share some similarities, which might have made his adoption less noticeable to outsiders. Your point about people not noticing the adoption as much when there are similarities in race and ethnicity between the adoptive and biological families is valid. Adoption experiences can vary widely based on these factors, and each person's experience is unique. Another thing is the class aspect. You told me that his biological parents were very educated, highly educated, and it seems like his adoptive family, adoptive parents also were uh, well educated or highly educated. Can you confirm if that's true and if it's true can we then say that he was adopted into kind of the same class environment uh, as his biological family? Because this makes the commu communication much easier I think than if he would uh, have been adopted from people without any kind of education or an alphabet or people uh, with a significant lower class heritage or how you say it because when it could have been some real problems with the then then it could have been some real problems with the communication because of issues of class and this is a real thing in these transnational, transracial adoptions with, which often comes from the south to the north, from poor families to rich families. And this is a com comparison from my own adoption. Uh, what do you think about my thoughts on this? Your observations about the class aspect of adoption are astute. In Steve Jobs' case, both his biological and adoptive families seem to have been from relatively similar class backgrounds, with an emphasis on education and intellectual pursuits. This similarity in class background may have made communication and understanding between the two families easier compared to adoptions across significantly different class backgrounds, as you mentioned. In transnational and transracial adoptions, where there are large disparities in class between the biological and adoptive families, issues of class can indeed present additional challenges. 
These challenges can include differences in values, expectations, and lifestyle, which can affect the adoptee's sense of identity and belonging. Each adoption experience is unique, and the dynamics of class can play a significant role in shaping these experiences. Another thing is that he was adopted from the same continent, from the same continent to the same continent. So, this was not from one side of the world to another side of the world. My adoption was from Chile to Sweden. It's hu- it's a huge, huge distance, which make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to maintain contact and to visit a biological family and so on. So Steve Jobs didn't have these kinds of problems with his biological family uh, or with his sister. He mentioned that he had a close relationship with his biological sister. So the distance made it possible for him to have that close relationship with her. I mean, if he would have been born on the other side of the world, that would have been impossible. So that's one aspect of it. And also, if he would have been adopted from the other side of the world, there would have been a time difference also uh, to add difficulties. So that makes it even more challenging. If you would have liked to have contact with, uh, with a biological sibling on the other side of the world with seven hours time difference, it's really, really hard. It's very, very hard. Uh, to have good contact, good a close relationship. So uh, this is an aspect I have seen in my life, which makes it difficult. It would have been much easier, for example, if I would have been adopted from Spain to Sweden, which is you know it's very far away, but it's not impossible to maybe travel between these countries maybe once a year uh, because the trips wouldn't be so costful and it would be like in the same same time zone so you can communicate on the phone or whatsapp on facebook when it's night in spain it's night in sweden uh, when you go up early in sweden you go up early in spain you live in the same time zone so that's another comparison. I would like to hear you say something about this. You've highlighted an important aspect of adoption that often goes unnoticed, the impact of geographical distance and time zones on maintaining relationships with biological family members. In Steve Jobs' case, being adopted within the same continent likely made it easier for him to establish and maintain a close relationship with his biological sister, as you mentioned. The absence of significant time differences and shorter travel distances would have facilitated more frequent and meaningful interactions. Your experience of being adopted from Chile to Sweden underscores the challenges posed by long distances and time differences. These factors can indeed make it difficult to maintain regular contact and develop a close relationship with biological family members, especially when compared to adoptions within the same region or continent. The financial and logistical barriers associated with long distance communication and travel can further complicate efforts to stay connected. Your comparison with being adopted from Spain to Sweden highlights how differences in distance and time zones can significantly impact the ease of maintaining contact. Being in the same time zone and having shorter travel distances can make it more feasible to communicate regularly and visit each other, which can strengthen the bond between adoptees and their biological families. Overall, The geographical context of adoption plays a crucial role in shaping the dynamics of family relationships and the ability to stay connected across different cultures and continents. Another difference is that what I understand is that Steve Jobs' story and the adoption in his life, it was legal because his biological parents were students at the time. They were young, very young, and they chose shows to not 
keep him because they wanted to continue studying or something like that. So that was the story and it was their choice. It was done legally and with many other adoptees, maybe mainly transnational adoptees, I can only compare with my own story right now, and it was not illegal, it was illegal. It's a huge difference from a legal adoption to an illegal adoption. Uh, that's a huge, huge difference. I mean, we're talking about trafficking, kidnapping, it's illegal. The crime is huge, it's a huge, huge crime. And the cause of this, in my case, when I look back, it's caused by poverty and discrimination and exploitation of a vulnerable, poor, single woman.